Okay, let's get it popping. Let's get it popping. Yeah, let's, let's do this. Let's, do it. let's get the good. Yes. Get the gusto. Yo, dog, I've, I've been, I'm, I'm, I'm excited, I know, man. yeah, you hit me, you know, you hit me. I just wanted to come when the timing was right because I didn't want to come <laughs> if I don't have no, no music out, man. You no music coming. You yeah, know but you're I mean? a legend, dog. I know, but, I, you know, I feel like energy around interviews should lead to something. You know what I mean? And no, like, you're right. You know, you shouldn't, you shouldn't, like, I've been super quiet for four or five years, you know what I mean? So Has it been like, that long? Dog, I haven't put out an album since 2014. No handouts. Wow. Man, Lux. Yeah. Bitch, smell the odor. But I'ma quit the day I get to smoke with Oprah. And we gonna have some fucking problems if... Wow. Okay, well, for the people who are in the listening audience, okay? Yeah. Um, for the people on the YouTube... Shit, you start? Are we filming? We filming, we filming. Oh, shit, what's up? For the people who are on the YouTube, they're already be be seeing and they'll be like holy shit i lie yeah. but for the people in the listening audience we have the legend and i'm talking about for the the, the times when real when, when toronto hip-hop was really bubbling really bubbling like what i call the toronto golden age mm. you know what i'm saying you was you, you is one of them niggas from them times and still continue to do your thing now. Yo, right? I'm, I'm super excited to be here. Like, regardless of what my face, look, my face looks like, I'm excited <laughs> to be here. And I'ma just pop uh, a little uh, baco. Just cause, I, just cause I'm here, you know what I'm saying? You have to just pop a baco, pour that for the homies, that's a little splash for the homies at least. Yes, yes. So with no further ado, we have JD Era in the motherfucking hey, 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 building. Hey, 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 yes, yes. Hey. yes. Mr. Era himself. Yo, I'm super yes. excited to be here. Yo, I watch your guys show enough, you know. I, Thank every, you. Every oh, interview shit. you guys Respect. put up, and, and to be honest with you, it was super necessary for, for you guys to, like, do this. Like, and, and it had to be, like, people from the culture. You know what I'm mm. saying? Like, it couldn't be no, no outsiders, no people that don't know, you know, the history in the city and, like, what people have done and where people have been. You guys are, like, the perfect people for this. You know what I mean? Like, just watching your interviews, watching how you guys conduct yourselves, you know what I'm saying? Like, thank you. I'm honored to be here, straight up. Well, thank, thank you, you man. To have you. Yeah, that's yeah, man, straight. We really appreciate that, man. And you, even, like, you're in this game as a vet and you're still doing a lot of big things. Like, last time I seen you was Freddie Gibbs show. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Gives my nigga, man. You know Gives my saying? nigga. Yeah. So, like, how, how do you do that, man? How do you still remain in this game and, like motivated and relevant in this game like um i think for me uh, taking a break was a big a big thing to be able to come back and still be able to to like love this stuff you know what i mean but yeah. i just i love rap you know what i'm saying like i've always loved rap i've always loved music and just if it's in you it's just in you you know what i mean like mm -hmm. you're, you're never gonna like i'll be 60 years old and i'll still record somewhere quietly you know yeah. what i'm saying with some kids or something just to be a part of that you know what i mean it's just if it's in you and you love it you're always gonna do that you know yeah. so for me that's always been that's just been what it is for me i, I can't st i tried to stop you know like even for a year or take a two-year break or whatever mm -hmm. and, and that whole time i've been gone and not putting out music i've been recording you know what i mean yeah, it's just yeah. that's just my life you know what i mean it's become a part of me you know so why the break uh i mean the raekwon situation i just needed to like decompress to be honest with you mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. uh um, if you if you know my history, I've, I've been doing music in the city for you know ten plus years. You yeah, know what I mean? Like yeah. since I was what eighteen years old, I've been running around and doing mixtape every year, mixtape or an album every year, mm -hmm. and then you know just running around doing shows around the city. So um, the Raekwon thing was like a a, a super high um, for me, and then the. I guess the conclusion of it was a super low for me. You know what I mean? So sure. I just had to just kind of regroup and just get to learn like myself you know what i mean like uh you know for 10 years you're you're doing the same thing over and over again and and it starts to feel repetitive after a while you know what yeah, i mean yeah, so yeah. i just had to like step back do life things you know what i mean like mm -hmm. there's life things i was just ignoring you know what i mean and just relationships in my my own personal life that i just had to like you know just kind of circle back around and just get all that stuff right you know what i mean and yeah. i'm back now because all that stuff is right now you know what i mean yeah, so my energy is right and i just needed to do that yeah nice. Take care of what needs to be taken care yeah, of yeah man you know life man that's just how it goes we get older you know different responsibilities exactly. different things come you know what i mean exactly uh well you know you mentioned it and i wanted to kind of hold it to later yeah hold it man we'll get there roll your boat, because you said to make one thing yeah, you know, but, we'll uh, there's more that there's more to yeah, that. Yeah, there's a whole, there's a whole you know lot. You know what I'm saying? But we'll get there. We'll get there. 100%. 100%. I see you as a sneakerhead. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. A yeah. super fucking sneaker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you got like some it. sponsorships and stuff going on, no? Um, some not, kind of no, thing not, going on over there. Uh, so I've always been like super close with like Nike Canada, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? So from when I was a kid, like... Uh, I'm, I'm a basketball like if a lot of people know me in the city just from playing basketball from when I was younger you know what I mean I used to play on a lot of teams in the city or whatnot so I'm a big like Jordan kid and like yeah. I've always been into sneakers from when I was young so the guys at Nike always mess with me nice. and always seen that you know what I mean and would like give me little little product placements you know what I mean? here's a pair of kicks for your video or whatever and, yes. and I'm a man that like if you give me a, a, a pair of kicks for my video I'm gonna double back and be like yo you need some music for a commercial you got or you know what I mean mm. so I've always been super close with them like i did the foot locker commercial for them and like i did a couple oh, photo nice. shoots for nike and stuff like that so i've always been like one to kind of finesse that way but yeah you know i keep close with nike but they you know they haven't caught me a check in a minute so i can mm. say adidas on a record i can say reebok uh, on a record you know you know uh, the kids open for a for, for game you know for what I mean? yeah, yeah man you know but yeah that's just, that's kind of the the nike connection you know so like okay so let's just stay on there for a second mm. so it came from basketball yeah, yeah, yeah. So like that all started from me playing ball. You know what I mean? Like I know I know a lot of guys um, just via that. You know what I mean? Via my my basketball career when I was a kid. Like I went to Loria University. I played over there mm-hmm. for a year. Um, and and just in all of that, that's how me and Nike kind of got connected. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 And then like, what inspired you to say okay? Let's start connecting the music to it. Was it like management or like did you come up with that on your own? I've always been just a hustler, you know what I mean? Like, Mm. I've always been trying to connect those dots. And just, like, watching... I've always watched, like, the U.S. guys, right? Like, in the U.S., um, brands and rap are, like, hand-in-hand. And I feel like in Canada, we're a bit behind in that sense. Like, there's a lot... Like, for example... Like, if I was uh, Nike Canada now or whatever, like, I'd be trying to endorse, like, a Pressa or one of these guys, you know? Mm. I feel like a lot of uh, brands in Canada miss out on up and coming talent and up and coming like superstars and stuff, and stuff like that so for me it was like shit if, they, if they're not going to pay attention to us like i'll bring it straight to your front door you know yeah, what i mean if yeah, you give yeah, me yeah. even a crack of a door like i'm a we're walking right in and like yeah. you know major was my old manager i'm mean, major is like he was super super really 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 good at that you know what i mean mm. like when it comes to like kicking down doors like i'll i'll put my foot in the door and then he'll kick that thing down you know what yeah, I mean? just so, a little crack of, oh hold on there's a sliver of the door yeah, open. Oh, that's yeah. all we need yeah, yeah straight that's all right that's in. all we yeah, need you grip it and pull it open yeah, yeah we're in there we're in there, yeah. we're in there you know what i mean so yeah. and like i've always been super business minded like i went to university for business and, and communication okay. so like i've always been super business minded and, and always thinking on how we could get dollars like outside of just like music and mm-hmm. you know i come from the mixtape era so outside of selling tapes and yeah, you know yeah. what i mean now it's digital and streams and whatnot obviously but you know i come from that hustle you know what i mean so okay touching on that hustle saying you're coming from the mixtape era yeah how did it affect you when they say you like they stopped selling mixtapes in the stores <sighs> that's the worst man you know it's it's mm-hmm. everybody was eating off of that so it's a point. gift it's a gift and a curse right like yeah. i always say the golden the golden point to me in music that a lot of guys missed out on and some guys hit it really well was itunes 99 cents mm. so when when the market switched to like that where it was like okay um you sell something and it you're getting 70 cents from it or whatever it is and your distributor is getting the other 10 or whatever it is yeah that that's when i think guys could have cashed out the most you yes. know what i mean that 9.99 an album and whatever I feel like guys were making a killing then but as soon as it became this streams you get three cents and six cents and a core fraction of a cent yeah, for yeah. Yeah. it kind of messed up the game and and just to touch on your like your mixtape point like uh me and my homies we have this conversation all the time you know what i mean like it it's a gift and a curse that i'm from that generation because anyone who was a part of that generation knows the amount of work that like guys like me put in you know what i mean mm-hmm. like my output in the mixtape era was crazy like yes. uh, in terms of the amount of songs that i was on the amount of features the amount of just work that was yeah. put into that you know what i mean that is now essentially deleted you know what i mean like because uh you can't find it on itunes you yeah. can't find you know what i mean unless you go on that pip and download it and you're willing to put it on your 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 phone that way or someone has the actual physical yeah or you got the physical yeah you know, some of my fans still got physicals mm-hmm. they send me pictures and stuff yeah. like that. unless you got a physical you know what i mean it's it's essentially you're done you know what i mean so there's a, a large portion of like toronto history that if you're let's say a young kid coming up now you have no idea it even exists and unless yeah. if someone threw it up on youtube you had that foresight to throw it up on youtube you know what i mean it's mm-hmm. gone you yeah. know what i mean so um yeah it's a gift and a curse to kind of come from that that mixtape age you yeah. know what I mean? so some of those mixtapes right because mm-hmm. <coughs> like you were saying you have some classic mixtapes mm-hmm. right 
I see like how you know R.I.P. Nipsey Hussle. He had like mailbox money that I first discovered oh, fire. as a mixtape. Fire, yeah. But then the they, and it was a DJ drama mixtape at the time. Mm-hmm. And then they put it back up on Spotify, and it was just clean without drama um, drops on it, and it was just a mixtape. Mm-hmm. So do you have some of those of your mixtape that you um, reapplied so like, to yeah, Spotify? Yeah, I mean, like, I could, I could put up. Um, like so for for example for me personally I'm gonna just put up all the stuff on my old site and if you wanna purchase it mm-hmm. purchase it you know what I mean I'll send you the physical copy of the CD and right, whatnot like right. my new website's gonna have all of that stuff but the problem with it is uh, obviously like clearances um, for a guy like me like I, I, I'm a guy that I'd rhyme on you know seven original joints and three of the joints might be some instrumental yeah. you know what I'm saying yeah, from wherever yeah, yeah. like, like uh, for example like uh, Black Magic is like a the legend in the making this few niggas fit it with the temperature of satan on my betty cracker shit you can say a nigga uh a, a fan favorite you know what i mean coast to coast anywhere i go people are like yo that song black magic black magic you and drake mm-hmm. but a lot of people don't know that's originally a swollen members record you know what i'm saying and like that was i was just a fan of swollen members and i love that beat so much i was like yo drake you gotta hop on this record you know yeah, what i mean yeah, we just yeah, did yeah. It. but that's like one of those things that it's you know, it'll live forever in its own space, you know what I mean? But yeah. I can ne- it'll you never, can't pro- you can't it'll, I'll never be platinum profit, from yeah. it, you know what I mean? I'll never be able to profit from it, you know? Yeah. So you're not gonna get a plaque. Right, you know what I mean? And and that's that's one of the things I, I regret of the mixtape um, phase, you know what I mean? And like generation that we weren't more focused on you know, trying to get plaques yeah. and, and stuff like, and and, and it's not it's and not necessarily them official songs too. Yeah, it's not necessarily just our fault because like you know, I was always on the radio. I was always a guy that was present on on radio, and I've always made an effort to like be on on like commercial things. You know what I mean? But mm-hmm. um, there's guys like me and Tona and a lot of like mixtape guys that just we were just as important as Chocolair and Cardinal mm-hmm. and some of these guys, but well, Facts. we didn't get plaques, you know what I mean? Because yeah. of the time, you know what I mean? Like labels weren't saying, okay, yo, we'll give you a hundred thousand, put out this album, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. they weren't really taking chances like that at those times, you know what I mean? So yeah. um, we were we, we were essentially the generation that had to figure it out, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? And Drake was the first to figure it out, you yeah. know what I mean? Like really figure it out, you know, out of us, you With know? so far gone mixtape and stuff like that, as soon basically. As, um, I'd say before that, comeback season. comeback season to me, yeah. you know what I mean? Really kind of set set the tone for where things were going. In I think season. it was a Toronto track, T. Orange, when he was like, The City, City is, is Mine. Is mine. That, that, shit. I mean, that record was huge. You know him and Boy Wonder? I'm on the remix though for the record. Um, you know what I mean? The remix was heavy, but you know, unfortunately, Mayhem. I remember that. Yeah, a lot of people don't know, you know, a lot of people don't remember that, but you know, me, yeah. Mayhem, uh, uh, Drake, who else was on that joint? Richie Sosa. Richie wow, Sosa, one of my favorite. Richie Sosa. Another mixtape, a mixtape wow. legend of me. You know what I mean? So, okay. Quick question. Mm-hmm. Now that we're on that time, mm-hmm. wise guys, break that down to us. Wise guys wasn't real. <laughs> wise guys was something the internet created. Man. Listen. So who was in the wise guys? This okay, not real yeah. crew. So for people that don't know, yeah. it was uh, it was me, uh, Drake, uh, Young Tony. Um, who is now Hush? Who's now Hush? Johnny Rocks, uh, who's just goes by Rocks now. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ken Masters and Bishop. So it was the six of us. And uh, we we kind of became a group based off of a diss record. You know what I mean? Mans were dissing Drake a little bit at the time, and we were all cool with Drake. This is the Aristo times. Yeah, this is the Aristo times. Okay. You know what I mean? So. And no, this ain't beef. Just missing a few ingredients. Dog, you ain't a general. Stick to being obedient. You know, we weren't really having it, so we mm. came together and did a little joint. They had their little crew, the offense or whatever it was called, or oh, whatever. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Offense. Like with Littles and those guys, yes. you know. So that that's how that came about. But like we never so I'll tell you this much. Uh Bishop was really spearheading it to the like he really wanted to make it a thing, you know what I mean? Because he was like he was the seeing, name the wise guys? Yeah, the wise guys. He really wanted us to be a group and like okay. he really he really tried to make it happen. And I I I give him the most credit for that because he really tried to make it happen in terms of like getting records together and really trying to connect all of that because at the time like E1 was like yo listen come pull up like we'll give you guys a deal you know what I mean? yeah because there was a lot of energy around yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah. E1 and a lot of hot MCs in there. yeah you know what I mean and E1 was interested in, in doing something at the time but at that time like Drake was starting to get his you know what I mean he was starting to get his stride and like yeah. you know it didn't really make sense for, for all of us but Bishop probably got some records like there's a couple records where like Drake might have gave him a verse and like I gave him a verse Bishop has all of that stuff though you know what I'm saying and like so unreleased 
wise 100%, guys. Hundred percent, Bishop. If you see Bishop Bragante, he definitely has something that in the vault, in the vault that the world's never heard. Waiting. Like, uh, he probably, you know what? He's probably Holland he probably Bishop. forgot. He's probably sitting at home thinking, like when he watches, when he hears this, he's probably yeah. thinking, you know what? Era's Dude. motherfucking right. Real life raccoon, rack life. Real, real, real life raccoon, yo, he's got that stash so What's it called? No, no, I'm no, saying, no, I'm saying his, he's oh. a bitch of bitch of that's, that's, yeah. that's his brand, rack life. Yeah, that rack life stuff. he's affiliated with it. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Okay, but... so what's the names of these tracks? Get high, high, then we get low. I'm gonna do a thing. It's the prince and I own it, you sensitive loners. By yourself while I'm chilling with some pimps and a... Oh, I couldn't even tell. Lord they're knows. Under, Lord, Lord knows. Lord knows. They're unreleased. Oh, the, the it's, it's, yeah. Yeah. it's whatever that mm. that was named at the time mm. it was recorded. On some Boy Wonder yeah. Beats. I'm sure it's on some Boy Wonder you know, Beats. Boy Wonder Wonder Beats. Yeah, yeah, these are like OG Boy Wonder Beats. You it's know probably on a floppy or a dat disc or something. Like, like for example, I had a record on um, Shorty Grind. Shorty Grind and put that money get into she Amy Winehouse. No, 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 no free head. She like, I need bread. Baby, I'm a... And it was uh flow played it a little bit back in the day it was mm -hmm. me drake and bishop on the record and like that's a record that came from that wise guy stuff so like we were recording to try and create a wise guys album okay. kind of it lasted two weeks maybe of us being like okay yo let's try and get some records together yeah. you know what I mean? but, See, and we had bishop on the show yeah, yeah when did. you get him back you gotta you gotta ask him bishop yeah, got the gotta craziest stash because he got like old snoop records he got Bishop got some crazy records in his vault, and he just never puts on music. Like he's Ooh. the worst for that. My Canadian hip hop buzzers are just going. <laughs> yeah, off man, he's, right a, now. he's the worst for yeah, that. Yeah, Friday's 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 hip hop spider senses are yeah, tingling. So you're right. telling me that these tracks, okay, and just stay on this for one more minute. <laughs> he's on a hunt now. He's gonna look. He's gonna hunt <laughs> he's down this show. The look. track that you just mentioned. Yeah. You, Drake, and Bishop. Yeah. That they used to play on Float. Yeah. Do you think they st is that still around? If, if it's not Float, Shorty Grinding. It. Um, it's on the internet. It'll be on the internet. It was you on, can find it on YouTube. Bit. Yeah, yeah. It was on. It, Hold it's, on a second. Sorry to cut you. Off. Yeah, okay. you Sav, Shorty, you don't. Uh, Sav's like you don't know that song. Yeah, apparently, Sav yeah, Ghost in the Room knows it. People know it. Ghost in the Room. Yeah, yeah. She, Ghost in the Room. She knows it. Uh, <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So do you still do you still connect with Drake and I mean, uh, no I haven't seen Drake in honestly I haven't seen him in years man it's been a, a couple of years he's he's a bigger man now you know what yeah. I'm saying you know but um but once again shout out to Juice DVD All Stars man all the time all day this is a Toronto thing shout out to my boy JD Era you know rocks I'm still in contact with rocks and okay. like you know a couple of the homies you know what I mean if I see guys it's all love you know what mm. I mean I show love when I see you guys but yeah no I haven't seen Drake in a minute still. How have you assimilated from like, cause you remember the hip hop Canada, the, the message boards and <laughs> MySpace and all yeah, that, right? Yeah. So now like, how do you assimilate now into the IG times and stuff like that? Um, so like, I, I'm not a big fan of like, I like to live in my, my bubble, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So I'm not a big fan of like talking to my phone and updating the world with what's going on in my life every two minutes, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? But. I get it that it's a uh, it's a necessity now in the yeah. game. So you know, I'm trying I'm trying to grow with it and and uh, you know grow with the Twitters and the Instagrams and uh, the Snapchats and all that stuff. I'm trying to grow with it, but I, I I lie to you if I tell you that that's my thing. You know what I mean? And that's the thing mm -hmm. that I enjoy. That's probably my least favorite part about music. Yeah. To be honest with you, the fact that now like a guy can be cool on Instagram and then that makes people feel like he's a better rapper or like you yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, like yeah, like. Yeah. He's because hotter based on his Yeah, traction. he's hotter, you know, and, and don't get me wrong, numbers numbers matter, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, the, yeah. your Instagram followers and all that stuff, all that stuff matters now, you know what I mean? A thousand percent, but I just, um, I've always been about the music, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. that's always been number one for me. I've always cared about only the music, I've always, you know what I mean? To me, yeah. that's kind of been the be-all and end-all, and like live shows, you know what I mean? Like, to live me, shows. that's that's the most important things, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? When fans actually come out to see you, like, is your live show popping? You know what I mean? Like, it's Hard cool, you can, you can talk on this thing and, you know, you know, Clout Chasing, you know, Takashi 6 9 you know, guys like that are, mm -hmm. they're popping on, on IG because they do a bunch of antics and, and stuff like that. I'm not really one for the antics because, yeah. you know, I, I know how real life goes, you know what I mean? So, Gosh. I don't really like to play with certain things, you know what I mean? But, you know, to each his own, you know, I get I get how the game is now, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, I'm, I'm definitely conscious of it now. Yeah. I'm trying yeah. to roll with it. I'm, try, I'm trying to get my blue check like you, like you, man. Yeah, <laughs> I'm trying, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to get on my it, blue man. check, bro. Yo, hey. yo, you know, I, I can't even front. Like, I seen on the Instagram thing. Oh, you can hit the thing to like get verified or whatever. You mm -hmm. see in the, in the yeah, thing, in the settings. So you can set, you can send them whatever, and so you know to verify your things. Mm -hmm. Like, yo, you know what? Let me try. Let me set my thing to get verified. Yeah. This guy's denied 
me. And I'm like, yo, do you know what I've done and how much work and how much thing it takes? You know what I mean? So I guess you got to have X amount of numbers before they green light it or a certain, like, I was told that a label got to submit it for you Mm. and, like, stuff like that. Like, I got to come from a third party or whatever. I don't know. Uh, That's a whole... Mans are paying for blue checks. Mans are doing all sorts for that. You know, uh, yeah, so. the, the blue check thing, I think you, you cut off the payment thing now for that. You see the social media, like you said, like guys that get famous off of just being social media mm-hmm. like this, you know, like there is no real pedigree behind. They just... Now they drop music because, like you said, oh, they're, they're famous. Yeah, on you're the, famous on the internet. You yeah. know what I mean? They're like, I just come from a different time. Like, like to get popping in my... You really had to... Like, I started out battle rapping, obviously. You know, like, if you don't know that, like, that's where I started. I started in the battle scene. You yes, know what I mean? So, to there. so, for me, it's like, I literally had to go to different neighborhoods and battle the best rapper in that neighborhood for that neighborhood to be like, yeah, yeah we know JD. They won't say, yo, I'm better than that rapper. But like, yeah, we know him. You know what I mean? Mm. They're like, they may, give me a blight. You know what I mean? They're, I rate him. You know what I mean? So, yeah. it was just a different thing, like, uh, in my time coming up. And, like, even, like, the mixtape grind, like, I was a hand to hand man. You know what I mean? Like, give me a five out. Here's a tape, you know what I mean? I'm yeah. going hand to hand. Paul Wall and these guys are selling how many out of their trunk? Shit, I could do that too. You know what yeah. I mean? So I just think, you know, getting stripes in my when I started was a little different. Now you don't even need you don't need a stripes or a cosign or nothing. You can literally pop on this internet and if you have enough people following whatever fucker you're doing, mm-hmm. you got a career. You know what Next I mean? Season, so, they drop a track. Yeah. yeah. That's it. The battle times. Because mm. you mentioned you're a battle rapper. So were you battle rapping first and then you decided I'm going to start writing music? Yeah. Or was it, so it was, you were a battle rapper yeah, first? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I started wow. out not even on like a writing thing. Like I was a freestyle battle rapper, you know? So I'm okay. not king of the dot battle. I'm like, ah, one minute, one minute, go. And like, you know, just come off the top of the head, whatever yeah, you got. Yeah, you know, yeah. what the niggas wearing freestyle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that's where I, that's where I come from. You know what I mean? So, okay. and I love don't get me wrong. I love King of the Dot and what they do, but uh, that's a you're whole other monster. You're rapping on beats, them times. Yeah, you rap on beats. You rap on what? Beatboxing. Beat, yeah. Oh, we talked about Those you the beatbox legend. You know what I mean? You know, I, man, I, I be beatboxing. Hundred percent, man. Yeah. That's, that's where so I come from. That's uh, how you um, dark out the place. That's how you um, slapped up scandalous. That scandalous. Time. Yeah. So, so, <laughs> so okay, okay, so we're going into the Sorry, oh, shout out Tony Ranks. Shout out Tony. Shout out Tony Ranks. He's not scandalous no more. He's oh, Tony okay. Ranks. But you know, the world, a lot of people will still know who yeah, he yeah, is. Yeah. But yo, shout AKA out. AKA scandalous. Shout out Tony. That's why I, I that's probably where I know, I know you from even back mm. them days, you know what I mean? But yeah, I, I won. Well, what battle was that? Uh, that was the Echo Battle. Echo Fest. Echo, Echo Fest. Fest. Oh, I remember Echo yeah, Fest. Yeah, yeah, Echo Fest. That was a, so I remember Echo Fest. Quick story about Echo Fest, and I'm still a little tight about this. They said, yo, you win the battle, you get to perform on the main mm-hmm. stage. Mm-hmm. I won the battle. He didn't perform I got my $1,000. And I had to chase I had to chase niggas for my $1,000 for the record. Mm. But I never got to perform on the main stage. And that cheesed me because it was like most deaf. I think Kanye performed that Kanye, year. Wow, yes. It was like a bu- bunch of rhymes. It was a bunch was of people. Big, it was a big and thing. Like, and that times I don't want two song on the radio. I was like, yo, this is my time to kind of come on. I get to, you know, main stage. I didn't get no main stage. Wow. But, you know, it was still sick. I was like... Stuff yeah. like that is. So is, you think that would have affected where you would have? No, not at all. No, like, no, no, not at all. So that's just a personal. That's just a personal. You know what I mean? I wanted to perform on that stage, and to be honest with you, I probably wasn't even ready at that time. You know what I mean? Like yeah. looking back, I probably wasn't ready, but it would have been a dope opportunity still. You know? So you were a battle rapper first. Yeah, I never wrote. That's why you were so fucking sick with the battles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I never really, I never wrote mm. songs at all. Literally, uh, I started writing my first songs. Maybe a year after I was winning my first couple of battles, you know what I mean? Uh, my old basketball coach, and like this is my mentor mm-hmm. um, when I was a kid, this guy Wells Davis, uh, he goes by Bad News. He was the one who, who was like, yo, like he was my coach at that time. He's like, yo, everyone keeps telling me you freestyle, you know what I mean? I was yeah. like, yeah, like, yeah, I freestyle. He's like, I got a studio at my house, like, come by. Mm-hmm. It's like, all right, cool. I went to his house, and uh, that's where I met Major, like my first manager. That's where okay. I met him and my first producer, Fever. Literally, I went to the house, they played a bunch of beats, maybe for like an hour, and would just hit record and just watch me go you know what Free i mean after that it was like yo start writing you know what i mean you gotta start mm. writing some stuff and like back then uh it wasn't so simple to like send beats you know you had to burn the beats on a cd or whatever whatever mm-hmm. fever used to play the beat i used to take my phone my little flip phone and record like eight bars uh the beat the right. loop and then i go back to my crib and just write to that eight bars and i'd write songs you know what i mean like ride clean wow. my first song I ever played on flow was ride clean and like that's how that song came about wow. you know what i mean wow. like 
So, you know, my like, yeah, man, like, I, you know, I'm definitely, like, humbled, like, to be where I'm at now, because I, I know where I came from, you know what I mean? Like, where I came from is is crazy, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, man, it, it's it's been a, a journey, man. A lot of these, this generation of artists won't know that grind we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. The mixtapes, the going in the studio and have to just, like you said, you never knew you were going to write. You just went there and started freestyling on beats for an hour. Yeah. And I was like, yo, you should start writing. And then, boom, it sparked their career. Straight, yeah. straight, man. I, right. I, I, I had no business being in, in rap. It was just on some... I was doing it for fun after basketball practice with the homies, you know what I mean? Mm. We're battling each other on the bus or whatever, you know what I mean? Yeah. It just happened, man. It just happened. So now, fast forward a bit. Mm. Fast forward kind of rewind, okay? One of these ones. Yeah, we're probably going to jump back and forth a little bit. You know, I know how this goes. So I posted something, and I seen you jump in the comments with the, with the shrug arms. Yeah, yeah. Right? Because we were talking yeah. about the, the interview we had with Genghis Khan and the Raekwon stuff. Mm-hmm. Okay, now he was explaining in in his interview how Raekwon should have, I guess he passed up on dealing with him because he gave him the wrong offer and he was just like, no, I'm not fucking with that. Mm -hmm. I don't know what J.D. Era did. I don't think I don't think his relationship with Raekwon in any way should have hurt him. Yeah, he just wasn't built for the job. You know what I'm saying? No offense, J.D. Era. You know what I mean? but, shout out to you, JDR. Yeah, shout out to you, JDR. But but realistically, mm. what Raekwon at that time and and Raekwon's my older brother. Yeah. So when I say this, I'm not calling I'm not calling him a fool, but he was a fool at that time for not doing what he could have did with me. And if he had given him a better offer, he would have fucked with it. Certain doors mm-hmm. um, and and would have done it. Mm-hmm. Now, so from what my perception, I'm thinking, okay, I seen you. Breakfast Club, I seen the interview and I was like, holy fuck, J.D. Era's right there, mm. right behind Raekwon. Mm. So you had to deal with Ray. What What's going on in them times? Well, before you get into that, mm-hmm. um, I, I, and what did you disagree with, with in that, that, in with that the, the Genghis Khan, so let's just address that first, you okay. know what I mean? Because I, I, I saw the interview and like, I, it was a bit a while ago, so I don't remember everything from the interview, mm-hmm. but like, from what I remember, you guys had asked him, you were like, yo, what happened with you and Raekwon? Mm-hmm. And then he was like, you know, um, I didn't like the contract, and uh, mm-hmm. that was the situation, you know, I, I wasn't really feeling how the contract was. Mm-hmm. And then he, like, segued into a big thing about J.D. Era, and I, I, like, I was a little bit disappointed in him mm-hmm. because, you know, uh, at the time, Ray had signed me, he assigned me, you right. know, uh, and you asked him the question, he didn't sign the contract, you know what I mean? You asked him why it didn't so-and-so happen, and the answer was because I didn't I sign didn't the contract, sign. you know right. what I mean? And to turn around and be like, oh, Arrow wasn't built for the job, and uh, whatever else he said, he was like, uh, you know, if it was me uh, and I did 63 dates across the U.S., I would have planted the flag, and all this stuff he was saying, mm-hmm. um, I was disappointed in him because, you know, the fact of the matter is... Um, you know, like for example, like on those those tour dates, I was hyping Ray set. You okay. know, what I mean, I wasn't I wasn't JD era opening and doing my own thing or whatever, whatever. Right. Um, and like I don't know, I just me and Camel will have our conversation when I see him, but I just I, I I felt like he tried to shit on me up here, and I I really wasn't feeling that. Like I, I he's a guy that I have a lot of respect for, and like his team Deep Waters, like I had a lot of respect for those guys yeah, just yeah, because yeah. over that time, you know, what I mean, like Huddy and those guys, like we really became close. Like I got to kind of. Uh, mix with those guys and yeah, do stuff yeah, with those yeah. guys you, you know what I mean and, and like uh, I just didn't I didn't think that was right and and on top of it he had an ugly sweater he was up here so ugly camel thing you know it was, it was hideous that thing was hideous uh, you know <laughs> oh, camel my nigga that shit was hideous my nigga uh, anyway you know what I'm saying uh, I was disappointed uh, mm, mm. in camel for that you know what I'm saying uh, mm. rest in peace caddy straight up yes you know yes. rest in peace caddy sure. top, you know what I mean cause I was I, I had a lot of respect for those guys but yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. you know I was, I was disappointed in them for that we'll say we'll, we'll leave it at that okay so then Tell me your side of the story now. My side, um, the Raekwon situation, I just think um, it didn't work. I think it didn't work for a couple reasons, you know what I mean? Uh, the the guy he had running it on this side um, wasn't as experienced, mm-hmm. um, in my opinion, you know what I mean? But there's, there's things that everyone could have done better, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. uh, personally, there's things I could have done better. I feel like uh, um, even, like, like for example, uh, I feel like No Handouts came out, right? Okay. No Handouts was essentially the first project to come out 
via Ice Age 2 but it was it kind of came out under black market you know what right. I mean like like I had my own record label we had distribution at the time when I first met Raekwon I had mm-hmm. distribution through Universal before he even came oh, you know what yeah. I'm saying so like a lot of people don't know that I was set up I was ready to go I was about to drop my new project mm-hmm. and it was um at that time it was like okay yo Ray's here Ray's interested in doing this deal, you know what I mean? And I was like, you know what? Like, let's leverage this thing, you know what I mean? It wasn't about money for me, you know what I mean? I guess for Camel, it was more about uh, the dollars and cents and what was coming his way. For me, it was more about how can I leverage this into a bigger thing, you yeah, know what I mean? How yeah. can I turn this into into something else? How can I tour off of this? The you know connections, what I mean? everything, The yeah. connections, and, and, you know, for some people, they looked at it like I took a loss on that, and mm-hmm. for me, I don't think I took a loss at all, you know what I mean? Because I toured like crazy after that, you know what I mean? I toured with Ray. Mm-hmm. I got to go move around the States with Ray. Niggas from the Funk Flexes to the Breakfast Clubs to the... All over the place. I was Ray's young gun and like walking in with Raekwon and everyone knows like, yo, that's Ray's guy, you know what yeah. I mean?